What's up guys? Welcome to Ghana Near Photography. My name is Don Alabi. Today I'll take you through my natural light portrait retouching using Photoshop CC 2020. This beautiful image you see on your screen was shot in collaboration with two other photographers, Mr. Shots and Shutter Factory. Guys, collaboration is a very good thing for creative. So if you're not collaborating, kindly go ahead and start doing it now. This image was shot with natural light. Natural light means just um, available light. And with this, the sun was mainly used. So you can see how the highlights are popping over here and everything looks good on this image. Now I've already raw processed this image in Capture One. If you want to learn how to raw process your images in Capture One, I have a couple of tutorials on that. I'll include a card up there and then a link in the description so you can follow up. So first of all, we are not going to use any plugin. You guys know I usually use the array panel, but going forward, I'm teaching you guys how to create your own actions and stuff so that you don't have to depend on plugins to be able to Retouch. Now, in my previous video, I showed you guys how to create your own frequency separation process and I added my action so you could download it for those who find it very difficult um, doing that. So with my standard retouching, I would do blemish removal first and all that. But now I decide to do that in my frequency separation because with this image, we don't have that much of blemishes. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. see the makeup looks good, her skin looks good also. So we don't have uh, too many blemishes to take off. So I'll just go ahead and then use my action since we already have it. So right here we have the action which I've shared with you guys in the previous video, but then I'll share it in this video also. So this particular action is for an 8-bit image. So let's just run it. Um, I'll just choose uh, the radius of 10 that's fine with me okay so this is how our action runs like so i use the mixer brush tool for all my frequency separation processes and then over here you guys already know the value is 30 30 30 25 that's what works for me so you guys should also go through change the values until you find something that works for you i've been using this for some time and it works fine so I stick to that. Now with this, we start first of all, save as you move on. Now with my bracket close and open keys on my keyboard, I increase or decrease the size of the brush. That's a shortcut and you should all be using that so to make your so as to make your process fast. Now with this we we'll just start um, blending the tones. Someone will ask, how come we've not done um, blemish removal? I would want to do that in the second step. So for now, I just want to blend the tones in before doing blemish removal. So what I do is, um, I do something rough like this first and then turn it off and on to see if it's working. If it's not, I delete the frequency separation and then create another one with a different radius but this seems to be working so we'll just go ahead and then quickly blend in now I wouldn't want this tutorial to be very long so as to make it boring so I'll go through quickly and then also other parts where I have to fast forward it so as not to keep you guys here for too long We are done with our mixer brush so let's zoom in to 50% and then take a closer look okay let's go to 100% and then look now if you want to learn more don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified anytime there is an upload so over here we go to the high frequency then I use the clone stamp 
with a flow of 5% and if you look at the sample over here it should always be set to current layer because you want to work on only the high frequency layer so with that we sample using your option or alt key pressed sample one area and then brush a couple of times over where you want to correct So we are done with our blemish remover, that took quite some time and one thing I do is after doing the blemish remover, I go back to the low frequency and then I do a couple of um, mixer brushing just so that um, I could fix some of the displaced uh, pixels. It happens all the time. Your eyes may not see but when you are done with the image you will notice. So it's always good to run another um, round of mixer brushing after your blemish removal. And also the reason why it's better doing your blemish removal using frequency separation is that you're targeting only the high frequency layer, the texture layer. So whatever you do there doesn't really affect the color layer. And also you can use any um, blemish removal technique you like, whether the clone stamp, the spot healing brush, the patch tool, any one that works for you, you can use any of them. Okay, so we have this. The next thing I would want us to do is to dodge and burn. So creating your dodge and burn process is very very easy i'll do a tutorial on that but for now let's just it's just um two curves two curves adjustment layers one for dodge one for burn so we go down here then we have the curves adjustment layer let's create this one so this will make it the burn so this is what we want we want something like this so we name it uh burn and then we invert the layer mask. That's a command with the delete button. We'll invert it because we don't want it to be applied to everything. We want to brush and restrict where it's applied. So the second one we'll create is uh, the dodge, which is this. All right, let's rename it to dodge. If you're confused, don't worry. I'll create another tutorial on how to create your own dodge. So with this also we'll invert it. So black means what? Height. So it's hidden everything that we are doing. So we'll just create a, a new folder, put all in that group and then name it um, DNB just so that we can check the effects as we brush. So for the first thing we'll do, we'll go to dodge, select a soft brush. I use, use, I use a flow of 3% for my dodging and burning so with that we'll just um, zoom out so you guys can see that so far we haven't used any plugins if you know how to create your own process you won't be stuck when you get a machine and then you don't have the plugins so it's always good to learn how to do these things by yourself you can use the plugins when you get a chance to but there are people who only rely on plugins and can't do anything on their own, which is very bad. We already have um, a popping highlight, so we won't do much of dodging. We'll do more of burning. And oh, as a bonus, I will apply my melanin um, 
action but then i have a tutorial on how to create your melanin skin tones in photoshop so i'm sure the link will just pop up here any moment from now so voila there you go so you can watch that tutorial and learn how to create your own melanin skin tone but as i said i'll add the action so you can just download it the link will be in the description so here we are burning the dark sides so this is just a um, global dodge and burn so let's look at it before and now it might be a bit too much on her face so what we can do is uh, we reduce the opacity of this whole thing to 80 percent okay so that's that's it better for me here awesome so this is what we have so far we will go ahead and then apply my melanin action so this is it over here once i click see what we have so we use the opacity to correct it so as i explained when you apply it like this it goes on the whole image the surrounding everything if that's the effect you want no problem you can keep it like that but it does know what you want if you want it to be applied to only your model now there are a couple of ways of selecting her and then applying to her through layer mask so what i'll do is i'll just go here and then select subject see i have just the subject selected so i'll just select my folder here and then layer mask so what it does is it's created a layer mask of the selection i made so you see that now the melanin effect is not applied to the background it's only applied to the subject so you see before and now so here we can decide to go high make a darker 30 percent works for me so if we zoom in see this is what we have she's darker than the but we haven't touched the background so with this normally i'll just take it to capture one and then do my color grading for the background so this is our final thing let's take a look at um, what we've done so far so first of all we did frequency separation then we did some dodge and burn and then applied my personal melanin action which i'll add to the description so you guys can download it so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a thumbs up like it and then share it with people you know will benefit from it also if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't get to miss any of my uploads i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for watching